Neurotransmission, Wikipedia article audio Neurotransmission, also called synaptic transmission, is the process by which signaling molecules called neurotransmitters are released by the axon terminal of a neuron, and bind to and activate the receptors on the dendrites of another neuron. A similar process occurs in retrograde neurotransmission, where the dendrites of the postsynaptic neuron release retrograde neurotransmitters that signal through receptors that are located on the axon terminal of the presynaptic neuron, mainly at GABergic and glutamatergic synapses. Stages in Neurotransmission at the Synapse General Description Summation Convergence and Divergence Co-transmission Genetic association Neurotransmission is essential for the process of communication between two neurons. Synaptic transmission relies on the availability of the neurotransmitter, the release of the neurotransmitter by exocytosis, the binding of the postsynaptic receptor by the neurotransmitter, the functional response of the postsynaptic cell, and the subsequent removal or deactivation of the neurotransmitter. In response to a threshold action potential or graded electrical potential, a neurotransmitter is released at the presynaptic terminal. The released neurotransmitter may then move across the synapse to be detected by and bind with receptors in the postsynaptic neuron. Binding of neurotransmitters may influence the postsynaptic neuron in either an inhibitory or excitatory way. The binding of neurotransmitters to receptors in the postsynaptic neuron can trigger either short-term changes, such as changes in the membrane potential called postsynaptic potentials, or longer-term changes by the activation of signaling cascades. Neurons form elaborate networks through which nerve impulses travel. Each neuron has as many as 15,000 connections with other neurons. Neurons do not touch each other, instead, neurons interact at close contact points called synapses. A neuron transports its information by way of an action potential. When the nerve impulse arrives at the synapse, it may cause the release of neurotransmitters, which influence another neuron. The postsynaptic neuron may receive inputs from many additional neurons, both excitatory and inhibitory. The excitatory and inhibitory influences are summed, and if the net effect is inhibitory, the neuron will be less likely to fire, and if the net effect is excitatory, the neuron will be more likely to fire. How likely a neuron is to fire depends on how far its membrane potential is from the threshold potential, the voltage at which an action potential is triggered because enough voltage-dependent sodium channels are activated so that the net inward sodium current exceeds all outward currents. Excitatory inputs bring a neuron closer to threshold, while inhibitory inputs bring the neuron farther from threshold. An action potential is an all-or-none event, neurons whose membranes have not reached threshold will not fire, while those that do must fire. Once the action potential is initiated, it will propagate along the axon, leading to release of neurotransmitters at the synaptic bouton to pass along information to yet another adjacent neuron. Neurotransmitters are spontaneously packed in vesicles and released in individual quanta packets independently of presynaptic action potentials. This slow release is detectable and produces microinhibitory or microexcitatory effects on the postsynaptic neuron. An action potential briefly amplifies this process. Neurotransmitter containing vesicles cluster around active sites and after they have been released may be recycled by one of three proposed mechanism. The first proposed mechanism involves partial opening and then reclosing of the vesicle. 
The second two involve the full fusion of the vesicle with the membrane, followed by recycling, or recycling into the endosome. Vesicular fusion is driven largely by the concentration of calcium in microdomains located near calcium channels, allowing for only microseconds of neurotransmitter release, while returning to normal calcium concentration takes a couple of hundred of microseconds. The vesicle exocytosis is thought to be driven by a protein complex called SNARE, that is the target for botulinum toxins. Once released, a neurotransmitter enters the synapse and encounters receptors. Neurotransmitters receptors can either be ionotropic or G-protein coupled. Ionotropic receptors allow for ions to pass through when agonized by a ligand. The main model involves a receptor composed of multiple subunits that allow for coordination of ion preference. G-protein-coupled receptors, also called metabotropic receptors, when bound to by a ligand undergo conformational changes yielding an intracellular response. Termination of neurotransmitter activity is usually done by a transporter. However enzymatic deactivation is also plausible. Each neuron connects with numerous other neurons, receiving numerous impulses from them. Summation is the adding together of these impulses at the axon hillock. If the neuron only gets excitatory impulses, it will generate an action potential. If instead the neuron gets as many inhibitory as excitatory impulses, the inhibition cancels out the excitation and the nerve impulse will stop there. Action potential generation is proportionate to the probability and pattern of neurotransmitter release, and to postsynaptic receptor sensitization. Spatial summation means that the effects of impulses received at different places on the neuron add up so that the neuron may fire when such impulses are received simultaneously, even if each impulse on its own would not be sufficient to cause firing. Temporal summation means that the effects of impulses received at the same place can add up if the impulses are received in close temporal succession. Thus the neuron may fire when multiple impulses are received, even if each impulse on its own would not be sufficient to cause firing. Neurotransmission implies both a convergence and a divergence of information. First one neuron is influenced by many others, resulting in a convergence of input. When the neuron fires, the signal is sent to many other neurons, resulting in a divergence of output. Many other neurons are influenced by this neuron. Cotransmission is the release of several types of neurotransmitters from a single nerve terminal. At the nerve terminal, neurotransmitters are present within 3550 nm membrane encased vesicles called synaptic vesicles. To release neurotransmitters, the synaptic vesicles transiently dock and fuse at the base of specialized 1015 nm cup-shaped lipoprotein structures at the presynaptic membrane called porosomes. The neuronal porosome proteome has been solved, providing the molecular architecture and the complete composition of the machinery. Recent studies in a myriad of systems have shown that most, if not all, Neurons release several different chemical messengers. Cotransmission allows for more complex effects at postsynaptic receptors, and thus allows for more complex communication to occur between neurons. In modern neuroscience, neurons are often classified by their cotransmitter. For example, Striatal GABergic neurons utilize opioid peptides or substance P as their primary cotransmitter. Some neurons can release at least two neurotransmitters at the same time, the other being a cotransmitter, in order to provide the stabilizing negative feedback required for meaningful encoding, in the absence of inhibitory interneurons. 
Examples include Noradrenaline and ADP are sympathetic CO transmitters. It is found that the endocannabinoid anatomide and the cannabinoid, when 55,212 can modify the overall response to sympathetic nerve stimulation, and indicate that prejunctional CB1 receptors mediate the sympathoinhibitory action. Thus can cannabinoids inhibit both the noradrenergic and purinergic components of sympathetic neurotransmission. Neurotransmission is genetically associated with other characteristics or features. For example, enrichment analyses of different signaling pathways led to the discovery of a genetic association with intracranial volume. GABA glycine CO release, dopamine glutamate CO release, acetylcholine glutamate CO release, ACH vasoactive intestinal peptide CO release, ACH calcitonin gene related peptide CO release, glutamate dinerfin CO release.